Well, Hyperloop One, the futuristic high-speed transportation company, just completed its second phase of testing. In the Nevada desert, a prototype accelerated down the length of its 500-meter-long track, reaching 192 miles an hour. The pod glides above the track using magnetic levitation in a nearly airless tube, which limits aerodynamic drag and theoretically allows for a top speed of 760 miles an hour. Earlier today, I spoke with co-founders Shervin Pishavar and Josh Geigel about what this means. We're now 300 people strong. The last two and a half years from starting the company has been about proving the technology works. Now we've shown uh, at Hyperloop One that the Hyperloop is real. It works, and now we move into what we call the dawn of the commercialization of Hyperloop. Um, so as all the travels that we've been doing and the conversations and dialogue and studies with governments around the world, uh, we've shown in the videos that you saw the actual full-scale Hyperloop working with the pod XP1 uh, traveling at, at incredible speeds, faster and faster, and now we move on to the commercialization process, uh, of actually building this out around the world. So, Shervin, I have the ticket you gave me to ride <laughs> the, the Hyperloop. <laughs> when will I be able to use this? Um, uh, sooner than you think, um, but keep on keep that ticket. That's a very special ticket, Emily, and uh, you're guaranteed to have a ride on, on the Hyperloop with Hyperloop One. Mm -hmm. That's a promise from both me and Josh. Yes. All right, so Josh, you know, what is the timeline? When will you have it up and running for cargo and for passengers? So the next phase for us is to actually move this into production space. So we have to make it, to make sure it can be reliable for 30 plus years and actually get it into a mass manufacturing market. So that's what's next for us on the engineering side. And we think we'll be able to do that by the 2021 timeframe. Shervin, how do you overcome cost barriers and safety concerns? That's a great question. We, we uh, Basically, the way that we have architected uh, the Hyperloop is to make it the, the cheapest, fastest, safest, cleanest form of public transportation uh, in the world. Uh, the, the way that we've designed it, uh, the reason it can be uh, cheaper is that the, the stators or the uh, motors that we've designed uh, only have to be on uh, on the uh, line for uh, uh, every 30 kilometers, um, whereas other solutions uh, have continuous um, uh, maglevs and, and motors that are um, uh, way more expensive to operate, maintain, and build out. So uh, what you'll see is a future that, that's very similar to what we've seen with uh, Paris and Brussels being connected with high-speed rail where people, there aren't even any flights anymore between those two cities. Uh, everyone is taking uh, the uh, high-speed rail route. What's interesting about uh, Hyperloop One is that our solution essentially will be an IP solution and a control system automation solution. So we really want to engender thousands of, of companies around the world that are building these Hyperloops around the world using our, our technology.